Matt, do you uh, anticipate uh, either Quay or Darnell missing in any significant time? Uh, we'll, we'll, uh, we'll kind of let that play out. Uh, we're hopeful that we could potentially get him back for Denver, but um, obviously that's almost two weeks away. Matt, um, a couple of questions about offensive identity. I'll kind of throw them all together at once. Um, a, is that a real thing, or is that just kind of like a media thing? And B, are you getting close to having one? Do you have one, and how do you build one? Yeah, that's a great question. Um, I think that there are, are certain areas where, yeah, you want to be able to hang your hat on something, right? And have, whether it's go-to players or, and or plays that you can go to in tough times that you know that you got a pretty good chance to have success with. Um, I always look at identity more of your pl style of play. And are you doing all the little things? Are you straining? Are you making the extra blocks? Are you pushing piles? Are you finishing forward on runs? Um, you know, scheme is scheme to me. And as long as you have a marriage between your run game and your pass game and formationally that you have plays that, that at least come off the same looks, that is all part of that identity. And um, I think that's something that we always work hard to do. Um, you know, unfortunately, I think everything kind of gets magnified when you're not having success. And that's, that's just the nature of it. And um, certainly, I think we did some good things. I think there's a lot of things that we can do a hell of a lot better. And I think it all starts with the detail. And we had a, a really long team meeting today and kind of laid out everything for our guys, areas where we have plays dialed up against the premier looks that exactly what you want them for. And we're getting the bare minimum and sometimes not even getting a positive play at all. And then there are other times, and you got to give credit to to the Raiders where we've got plays dialed up that are against horrible looks. And you're like, how can you not make, how can you take a bad play and not make it worse? So maybe a zero, zero yard game is better than, you know, getting sacked or whatever it may be. So, um, but I think a lot of it comes down to just our detail and, you know, where are we putting our eyes? What are we doing? Um, are we using the correct technique? I think a lot of just our inability to be successful offensively is we've had negative plays or we have a penalty. Now, we weren't penalized as much yesterday, but we've been in these get back on track situations and we've had a hard time recovering from that. We have not had success in those, you know, second and 10 or 11 plus situations. Um, and then you're stuck in third and long, or we had a second and 17 yesterday where we threw an interception. So um, we just got to do a better job of, of trying to avoid those situations, staying on schedule, uh, even if it's, you know, second and nine. That's a hell of a lot better than second and 10 plus. So I just think there's a lot more out for, for this group. And we just have to have that urgency. And it starts with us as coaches and making sure that we're very intentional about what we're asking our guys to do. And then they gotta be a part of this process as well and, and make sure they're communicating maybe things that they don't understand quite as well. And, or, and, and we gotta put just whether it's drill work, whether it's teamwork, um, in order for our offense to come together and actually show progress. Because it's been very, very frustrating, I would say the last couple of weeks. We've, it, it's been so um, hit or miss, I thought, you know, these slow starts, I think back to yesterday, I mean, we had the first two drives of the, the game where we had eight play drives and we end up with three points. We have a third and three where we have a busted route and they play cover two. And ironically enough, that's where the ball should have gone is where the, the route was busted. And, you know, we also have to progress through. And if it's not there, don't force the throw down the field and get to a check down. And maybe you're playing, you know, fourth and one or fourth and two. And um, 
but I just think there's there's been so many things that have come up in some some critical situations that have, have really set us back. And by no means am I trying to throw blame at our players. I, I'm as much a fault as anybody. Like I said, not every play caller is going to be perfect. I put our guys in some bad situations. There was a couple yesterday where we run an outside zone. Uh, they got penny what we call penny personnel on the field where it's nickel defense with five bigs and we're running an outside zone and um, uh, 98 swims our tackle and gets a TFL. So like, you know, that's on me. But I think collectively there's a lot that we can improve upon as a group and hopefully we get that corrected in, in short order in order for us to have success. Weird way of saying it, but is this, is this what young looks like? With inconsistencies like this? Uh, yeah, I never want to fall back on that because I, I just think that's such an excuse. It is what it is. I mean, we're going to play with the guys we have, and we believe in the guys that we have. And I do think we we do have a lot of talent. Um, I think we were all knew that there was going to be some growing pains along the way. and But I haven't lost faith or belief in the, in, in the group that we have. I just think that we can do things better. And I think we can coach better, and I think we can execute better. I get you don't want to use it as an excuse, but you knew what you were signing up for this year, right? I mean, you told us at the end of camp, we have to be process-based. We can't always focus on the outcome. You don't often hear coaches be that honest about what they might be up against with a first-year starter at quarterback and so many young guys on offense. What I'm wondering is, how do you demand of these guys? You're talking about, you know, knowing where your eyes need to be and using correct technique. That's not stuff you got to deal with when guys are veterans. So how, as a coach, are you trying to tweak what you're doing so you can put young guys who aren't experienced in better positions? Yeah, I think, uh, you know, just trying to reflect on it from a coaching standpoint, it's great we have all this big old call sheet with all these plays to attack certain looks or whatever it may be, and it really doesn't matter if you can't execute it. So I think just from a coaching standpoint, we may have to look at, at just how much are we putting in on these guys because you're right, we do have a, a lot of young guys. And um, although we didn't have a ton of uh, mental mistakes, it's just we did have a, a few in some critical situations. Um, that we can't have, uh, but yeah, I, I just think every week we have to continue to learn, both from successes and obviously from your, from your failures. And um, if we do that and we can avoid making the same mistake twice, I think we have a chance to show progress. Um, the third and three busted route, was that what you were discussing with Musgrave at the end of that series? <laughs> Yeah, I mean, and listen, I Luke Luke is a really good player. He's going to be a really good player, and and that's just it, it happens. I think we we tagged the concept and we motioned from a one by three to a two by two, so I think there was some confusion there because he was asking Jordan what he had, and Jordan told him the concept, and so it's just again, it's sometimes that happens in football. And so hopefully we can be a little bit better and, and be a little bit more clear and, and make sure that our guys can anticipate maybe some of the calls that are coming in some of those, those critical third down situations. The thing, the thing that you said at the beginning, having something to hang your hat on as an offense, do you feel like you're close to finding what that is? And if not, what's the process? You feel great. I got to play football practice. Oh, play football? Uh, All right, good luck, man. <laughs> All right, get after him. Thanks. All right. <laughs> Run the triple option. What's the, what's the process of determining, especially going to fly? What, what, what do you want that to be for this offense? Yeah, I, I, I think, um, you know, just looking back and, and talking about yesterday, for example, uh, the thought was to get a little bit more under center and see if we can operate at a higher level. I thought our run game definitely benefited from that. Um, you know, we still have a ways to go, I would say, with just some of our play action. Um, I thought it was good to get Jordan out on the perimeter. We, we probably didn't do it enough, if I'm being honest about it. He's, he's made some plays with his legs. Um, 
and you, you got to be careful, uh, you know, when you have a, a guy like Max Crosby on the edge when he's lining up on your right or on your left, did not want to keep back into him at any time because, I mean, he jumps around blocks and he can, he can make you look silly in a hurry. So we wanted to be very particular about when we were going to call those plays. Um, but just looking back, I think there was probably a few more opportunities there that we could have taken advantage of. And, you know, give credit to, to the Raiders. They did a very good job uh, of disguising. We had a couple cans in where, where, where they definitely held their shell or showed one thing and played another, and they did a good job. Matt, going back to what I asked earlier, I'm curious, how do you balance simplifying things for your young guys? And also, this is a league that's about, you know, whether it's complexity, the illusion of complexity that we've talked about with you before, or having challenging concepts for defenses. How do you balance keeping it simple for them while also game planning for your opponent to make it hard on them? Yeah, yeah. That's, that's always the trick, I think. Um, and... You know, you would like to hopefully dress up whatever concepts you your guys are used to running, and they you feel they feel confident in, um, and just dress them up in certain di in, in different ways, whether it's by motion or formation or whatever it may be personnel, um, and, and so it's it's simple for us, but gives the defense a different look. Matt, when, when you go back to the. Uh... Devontae Adams against Preston Smith. And if you can't get checked into something different, isn't a, a timeout an option there? And sure, you could always burn a timeout. Couldn't Preston be the guy that just does that? Yeah, I, I, I mean, especially in the, you're talking the second half of games, those timeouts are, are usually pretty valuable. Um, you know, uh, I think just knowing that receiver and when he's at the number two spot there's a most people have a pretty good idea of what he's going to run he's going to run what we call a looky route basically you can't be right as a defender if you're outside leverage he's going to run a slant and if you're inside leverage he's going to run an out and so it is a tough spot to be in we talked about it we do have the ability to make some empty checks to avoid those situations and in that one we 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 played the coverage that was called and it does put our guy in, in a, a predicament, especially it's just it's a, it's a premier wide receiver on uh, P who I love, and I think he's really good in coverage. But I think we, we – that's not an advantage us, obviously. Um, but, yeah, I think there's some things that we could have executed a little bit better in, in that situation, just making sure that we stay inside and try to get hands on and, and force the outbreak and – Rally and tackle, and instead of a 20-yard gain, it's probably going to be an 8- to 10-yard gain. But, um, but I, I also think there's some things we can do from a, from a coaching standpoint to better, that is better suited for our players to have success. You guys are in base there against, like, what, two tight ends? And, uh, yeah, they're in formal personnel. We are in base. That's normal, right? You, they, play, you play base. Yeah, uh, and they, they emptied us out, and, um, and they ran. They ran what we call wiki. The reason I ask is, do teams normally empty out of that? Because yeah, that absolutely. I, I, you, you can. And um, usually when the wideout's at the number two spot, that's the route you're going to get. With the youth, you said it is what it is. How much have you peeled back or, or simplified your offense to account for the youth of this offense compared to what you've run in the past or maybe maybe a year ago from a schematic standpoint? Well, I, I just think there's probably more – we try to carry over more for, on a week-to-week -week basis instead of just going a whole new direction based on the team we're playing. Um, the more carryover, usually these guys have banked reps at it and you feel that they're a little bit more confident in it. And sometimes that doesn't always work, but um, – you know, I, I think all that stuff gets overblown, quite frankly. I think if if we're going out there and we're executing some of the plays that we know are there, um, I think this doesn't get talked about. If we're scoring points, nobody's talking about this. And unfortunately, when you score 13 points in a game, it gets talked about, you know. Uh, there, there, was a, there was a lot of opportunities out there, um, particularly in, in the screen game. I mean, we had – some premier looks and we're not getting any yards. Um, 
in, in our screen game. And then there were some other ones where they should have been explosive gains and we're getting like six or seven yards. So uh, we had a quarters beater dialed up uh, the deep ball to, to Christian and they're playing a low quarters and they give us the look and we don't connect. So I think there's a lot of things that if if we execute and 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 make the plays, then a lot of this stuff goes away. Matt, what do you want to see from your players when they come back after this extended time off? I just want to see a sense of urgency, um, a competitive spirit, and just really dial in and, and, and truly take it one day at a time and focus on what lies ahead and. That is improvement. So, and I think that always starts again with us as coaches, making sure that we we have that same sense of urgency as well. Any reason to think that Aaron Jones won't be good to go when you guys get back? Uh, yeah, we'll see. I'm sure, sure as hell hope so. Yeah, um, I got into a pretty heated argument about this today. I don't usually do that, except with Rob. Um, do you believe in growth through failure? When you fail, how do you turn that into growth? Well, I think as long as you're learning from it, and again, not making the same same mistake twice. I think there's a lot of um, good that can come out of adversity if you stay, you know, tough-minded and persistent, and you don't let it bring you down. Um, and that's what I told our guys. I was like, nobody's feeling sorry for us. And if we feel sorry for ourselves, we will regress. But as long as we take that approach, like, hey, we're going to roll up our sleeves and get back to work, then you got a chance to, to show some progress. And that's what I want to see. I want to see that fight from our team, and I, I believe that we will. So do you think you regressed yesterday? Well, I think anytime you don't get – I don't, I don't want to use the word regressed, um, but – Certainly the result wasn't what we wanted, and I thought there was plenty of opportunities there. I thought, like I said last night, I thought our defense played well enough to give us an opportunity to win. Uh, when you look back at it, we basically gave up 14 points defensively. We spotted them three from an offensive standpoint with that turnover. I thought it was a great display of sudden change defense, forcing the, the three and out and the field goal. Um, you know. We, we got the one turnover that set up a touchdown. That was a good example coming out the second half of, of showing really good complimentary football, uh, which we haven't always shown that consistently. Um, and even yesterday didn't do it. But um, yeah, I, I don't want to use the word regress because I do think that there were some good things. It's just, uh, we just got to make sure we, that we learn from, from our mistakes. Uh, so when you look at Jordan, you know, I know from the outside, the expectations were raised with what he did in the first two games. You're not worried about outside expectations. You're worried about in here. But how do you kind of look at, there is kind of a line of demarcation in terms of how well he played in the first two and how the last three have gone. How do you kind of feel about where he's at overall? I just, uh, yeah, I, I think that, um, you know, I, don't, I think there's definitely some plays that we'd all like to have back. Um, they're just like there's some calls I'd like to have back as well. Um, and quite frankly, it's it, all the all the spotlights going to be placed or the majority of the spotlights going to be placed on the quarterback. And that's not always the case. Um, you know, we have an opportunity in the two minute drive and we have back to back drop balls. I mean, it is what it is like. We get, we got to make those plays to help us to help put us in better position. And maybe that last play doesn't happen. Um, you know, we got beat up front on the last play that forced a scramble drill. Because if you, if you go back and watch the tape, I mean, Christian was behind the corner. So uh, there, it, it just it gets magnified. It's, it always comes down to the quarterback. That's what you guys like to write about. Um, but it's the truth. Uh, or the coaching. But... Uh, but it, it truly is. That's what that, that's what's so great about the sport is it truly takes all eleven. And I know you guys want to bust my chops saying that's coach speak and whatever, but I truly believe that. And I think you you see it on the tape every week when you have great plays. It's everybody doing their job. 
And when you have bad plays, it's, it could be just one person not doing their job. And that's just the way it goes. Not having Aaron Jones really full go any of the last four games, it's, it's easy on the outside to say, well, he's a dynamic playmaker. Offense gets him back. Things are rolling. We saw what, what happened week one, obviously. How much of that is true? How much is it just you're missing a dynamic guy, a playmaker? And, and how much of it goes beyond that with, with the struggles right now? Yeah, I just, like, I, I never liked that narrative, t to be honest with you. Um, he is a great player. There's no doubt about it. And he's an explosive playmaker. I mean, we saw what he did week one with the choice route and then the screen that we ran, um, just getting big explosion plays. And he does tilt the, the field in your favor. However, there's still uh, an expectation that you got to go out there and perform no matter who's out there. So I never want that to be the narrative. you got to work around that. That's football. There's a lot of other teams in this league that are dealing with similar situations, and, and you got to find a way. And so that's... That's all of us. It's it's our ability to put together a, a competent game plan, and then it's our you know it, it comes down to the guys being able to go out there and execute it. So, um, you know, you, you always got to work around it, and I never want that to be the narrative or the excuse because it, it really doesn't matter at the end of the day. Three more plays. In that, going back to the bye for a second, is is there any different change in approach on the early side of it as opposed to the last two years where I think you guys had the latest one? Um, in terms of just coaching perspective, just how you, how you... No, I, I, I think, uh, you know, you just kind of... This will give us a good opportunity, first of all, to allow some of our guys, hopefully, to heal up and be ready to go next week. But um, as far as the approach is, you know, we've got five games that we can really kind of look back at. Uh, I'm going to study some things around the league and see if there's something that we can steal. <laughs> To, to try to find a, a way to generate, specifically on the offense side of the ball, just uh, g generate some some um, momentum for our offense. But I think we just got to look back and, and take um, a good hard look at maybe how opponents are seeing us and what teams are doing to us from a defensive perspective that has given us some problems. And maybe we can get in front of some of these things so, so they don't reoccur. I know you want to be productive regardless of what happens before the buy starts. But for you, given how competitive you are and how frustrated you, I'm sure, are with yourself and along with the record, does your plan for this week change? Are you going to be spending less, more time here and less time at home? Like, you have to recharge batteries, too. So yeah, what do you and, and we have, you know, we have for sure a 12 game season in front of us. So. Um, yeah, I wouldn't say I'll, I'll be sleeping in the office these next few days, but uh, I would say that I'll be in here quite a bit and um, just try to find, find something that to build upon moving forward.